Hello, and thanks for joining us today to learn about Western Atlantic University School of Medicine, or WASM. My name's Sean Powers. I'm Director of Admissions for WASM. Very excited to welcome you to our year in review as we take a look back at the questions that were most often asked of us and our prospective students during our live stream series this year. And whether you're starting to just begin researching your options for medical school, or whether you're weighing the options that you've been given and looking to make a decision on where you'll be attending medical school, we're confident that you'll be able to get the information you need and you'll be as excited as we are about moving forward with WASM. Now, whether that's moving forward with an application to the class that starts next fall in September of 2023, the one that starts this coming May of 2023, or even the one that starts in January of 2023, next month. That's right, we do have a few seats available. And so if you are the student who has your bachelor's degree done, MCAT's taken, everything's in place, and you're ready to start, and ready to go, and you're just learning about us for the first time, we will be able to process your application and consider you for admission to January of 2023. And every day, we're talking to students who are just learning about Wassum for the first time and are telling us that they didn't realize that they didn't have to wait until next fall to embark upon the next phase of their journey toward earning their MD. So with that, we'll kick off the countdown. The number five most commonly asked question from prospective students about Wassum was pretty simple. Why did you choose to attend Wassum? I chose Wassum for the small classroom sizes and just the community, the sense of community of the students and the faculty. One of the main reasons I'm here is uh, Dr. Elchi, um, you know, he's worked for the NIH, the WHO, the CDC. You know, these aren't just, like, it's a new school, but the faculty have done this before and they are truly here for our success. And so that is one of the reasons why I came to Wassum and, you know, how it really like, you know, it was like a wake up call of like, this is why Wassum's right for me. I chose Wassum because it's super close to home. I am from South Florida. I have to pinch myself every once in a while because I'm like in med school and at home at the same time. So I'm getting the best of both worlds in a sense. I really wanted to step outside of my comfort zone. Um, you know, I went to, I've always gone to like my, through my undergrad, um, you know, being from Arizona, I was, I, I was raised in Arizona. I went to undergrad in Arizona and I've never really branched out that much. Um, so I thought that this was just a really great opportunity for myself to really just kind of, you know, step out of that comfort zone for me. I knew that the stress of medical school could be a lot to handle. I lived in Gainesville, which is kind of a city, and I liked the idea of being um, more of a smaller town, uh, people that actually talk to you. Each like break we have is a member of my family's birthday, so like April 23rd is our first break. That's my sister's birthday. So little details like that, I just feel like the school is just made for me and just Wassum is home. Come to Wassum, come be a part of the charter class. And I was like, never heard of Wassum. Like, what, what's going on? And then, you know, I kept on putting it off and I was applying to other schools. And then there was one day where I actually got like a physical postcard in the mail of like, no, you should really apply to Wassum. <laughs> I initially applied for September, I moved to May. And then after interviewing with Sean, I was just like, nope, I want to be a part of the charter class. So I want to have opportunity and not to solidify my decision to continue my medical education process. The flipped classroom was a high advantage. There's been so much research on it that it's a better learning style. So for me to have that, like, oh, okay, it's better, it's gonna be enhanced my medical <laughs> environment and knowledge. Even the first interaction with the faculty, they're just so supportive. The interview process was like the best interview I've ever had in my life. And I also really like how um, how it's just, it feels less busy going on. And um, I chose apartment specifically with some kind of a water view so I can have that calm, like uh, just a calm thing every morning I can wake up and not be stressed out even though it is a stressful thing we're doing for them. I ended up applying and uh, you know, the free application uh, fee was fantastic. You know, I'm like, hey, might as well. I didn't know where you would go to find professors literally saying, come to my office if you're having a meltdown, please. I'm here for you. And I think having that was definitely, you know, I am away from home. Well, we both are away from home and loved ones. So definitely having feeling coming here with that community of I'm going to be safe and I'm going to feel like, okay, I can do this. 
So there were a few responses to the number five most commonly asked question from prospective students about why our current students chose to enroll at Wasm. Perhaps this time next year, you'll be joining us and you'll have a reason of your own to share. And now on to number four. The number four most commonly asked question from prospective students about Wasm was related to the location of our campus, which is in Freeport, Grand Bahama, just a 27 minute flight from either Miami or Fort Lauderdale, because it's only 80 miles off the coast of South Florida. So the number four most commonly asked question is not only about the location, but why our students feel it's beneficial. Just to give you an idea of where we are, um, you know, we're 80 miles off the coast of South Florida in Freeport. I live in, or work in Fort Lauderdale and the island of Grand Bahama Island where Freeport is, is located off the coast of Palm Beach, Florida. It's 80 miles northeast of where, uh, where I live. The flight, by the way, it's like you go up and you go down. Like all, like I know, I know you probably see that on the website and I so you say, I'm telling you like that is the, I was the craziest thing. I got, I literally got on the flight, had like a soda and they were like, okay, we're now landing. I'm like, we just literally took off. It kind of feels like what the Keys feel like when I drive in, you know, in the Florida Keys, if you haven't been there or if you've been there, or if you haven't been there, maybe you've been to rural North or South Carolina. It's less than 30 minute flight away to Miami. And just, I think I've, driven places, you know, for, for school in, in uh, the States um, longer than that. The people, the Bahamians, um, are some of the most friendly people I have ever met. Just after our last exam, there had been some things going on, some family type stuff, and different things I needed to get done in the States. And, you, you know, after an exam, you don't have much more time than that, that until the next exam. So I had to take that time and I only had to miss you know, a day and a half of school, but it really was like perfect. And I got so much done and I got to take care of my family emergencies. And I couldn't be more blessed because like, I also get to be living, like I said, this whole other culture and everything. We're called a Caribbean medical school, but there's nothing Caribbean about us. Um, even Bahamians don't consider themselves Caribbean. They consider themselves North American and mostly because we are located in the western atlantic hence the name just being able to go back and forth that easy and just you know from miami the huge airport so you just go wherever you want from there um, that's really beneficial it's nice to be able to go back um and there's also boats too it's not just a flight they have really quick boats and stuff i had my layover in miami and we took off from miami they had just handed out the waters and then the pilot said okay and we're making our initial descent i'm like i just got my water you can see where all most of the other schools are um they're they're color coded where we are that little green dot up the top uh, left in the corner and then all the way down way past um the dr and puerto rico and um you know and, and the, the schools that are the well most well known st george's is really close to south america ross and barbados is really close to south america i have a wedding coming up uh, it's my brother's wedding i'm the best man probably shouldn't miss it so i'm definitely gonna go um, but being able to just you know get right out of class take a flight straight to miami straight to indiana um, you know and be there for the weekend and come back by sunday night and you know go back to class right on monday morning it's it's so beneficial just the accessibility of you know the states being right there i know a lot of my friends um you know we have the long weekend coming up some of my friends are going to miami for the weekend or you know one of my friends is even going home this weekend um he lives up in virginia if you ever need to de-stress and you want to get to the u.s again you're you're a, you're a flight away that is a 25 minute flight or there's a ferry that a fast ferry that gets you there in three hours there is a bit of a transition it's like okay you're here to learn you're not here on vacation um and so but just having this very chill environment has been fantastic All right, so those were responses from our current students about why the location of our campus in Freeport, Grand Bahama is beneficial for them. On to number three, which is about Wassum's curriculum, how it's structured and also how it compares to other medical schools. Once again, here are our students to discuss.
Our flipped classroom means that students have to do preparatory work before they come into the classroom. And then the whole time with faculty is spent on solving problems. In a lot of other, other environments, you have lectures followed by lectures followed by lectures. So it may be a lecture in anatomy and then biochemistry and physiology and, and so on. And it, and it may not seem um, logical or together or congruent. And, and so we sort of upset the apple cart here, and I don't, I don't want to say it's upset, but we tr we're trying to really go from patient down and, and making everything integrated and really clinically relevant and patient-centered from the first semester. We know, as medical educators, that about 50% of what students learn in medical school will be obsolete at some point during their practice, 50%. We just don't know which half or we wouldn't teach that half, right? So we know that that doesn't mean that the, the, the information will decrease because we know that the information in medicine is doubling about every 80 days, eight zero, right? So what that means is half of what we're teaching will be obsolete, but we're going to continue to gain more and more information and students and practicing physicians have to be able to assimilate that information. So the best thing that we could do for students in medical school is teach them how to learn. We do a lot of like clinical-based cases and I think that really puts it well together for me because it, you can look at the material and be like, okay, like these drugs and like these are the symptoms, but you just, it's kind of just out there. But then when you really bring in like a good clinical case and you're like, okay, like this is important why we're learning like pharma, like dynamics type of thing. It, like when it comes down to like, you have a real patient, a real person who's gonna present and this is why you need to know the basics behind that. It's much harder to learn how to learn, right? It's like planting little hooks in your brain and then hanging bits of information on those tendrils. That's what people used to do. Like they'd study biochemistry and they'd study microbiology and occasionally those tendrils would intersect and people would have an aha moment, right? We don't want to do that. We teach in an integrated way, so a tapestry is built all along, so that when one of those pieces of data change, you know, that te those tendrils, they don't lose the whole bit of information, they still have the tapestry. In the classroom, there won't be one faculty, there may be three, there may be four. So you have a clinician and a pharmacologist and an anatomist in there, and you might be working through a problem, a story. You know, what do we remember? We remember stories, we remember Oh my goodness! This person had this illness, and this is and and this is the story, and or the patient. You remember your patients, and so you have all the faculty in there, and they're weaving it together, together and integrating it. Why does this bio? Why is this biochemistry meaningful? Why is now? How does the pharmacology relate to the biochemistry and this patient or this case? And this allows us to not teach just one discipline at a time, like biochemistry by itself. We can weave it into physiology and into the clinical presentation of a patient so that you can manage those NBME questions even in your first semester in medical school, which I think is, is pretty noteworthy. So it all makes sense and it's like, okay, I left the classroom and I'm like, I can, I can do a write-up. <laughs> I can do it from beginning to end with interviewing and everything, I can do it. So there you got to hear about our flipped classroom approach, our active learning methodologies, a more dynamic curriculum. You also got to hear how it's a bit different from other medical schools, which you may be considering. And that leads us right into the number two most commonly asked question this year from prospective students about the university, and it's about how academic support works at Wassum. You'll also hear how it's vastly different at Wassum compared to other medical schools. Number two, most commonly asked question, academic support at Wassum. Well, academic support here is just huge. Uh, we have our Center for Academic Success, which is led by the great Dr. Zellner. So every week we are having CAS sessions, um, and especially during your first time here, during the first semester, those are really um, plugged in, especially during orientation, because they really want you to be a success here. You don't want to move all the way to Freeport just to be sent back home. Academic success uh, program partners, and so there are faculty and staff on campus who are assisting us uh, with just anything that we need to be successful. 
We can just shoot a quick, uh, quick email to any of the professors. They all respond on timely manners. Um, we actually have like, they have office hours throughout the week at certain times. We can just go to their office or knock on the door, see if they're busy. And so, so faculty, someone's always available. Yeah, the faculty is always available. Aside from office hours that each professor have, they also have an open door policy. If you just want to knock on the door. Um, we do have a once a week flex tutorial, which we, as students, we can come to class. It's not mandatory, but the professors come as well. Any questions we have for the previous week or the current week, we can bring it to their attention. And they all, that's also a dedicated time for us to get material this week. This is a resource virtually for every student, and that's why every faculty member has a cross appointment with Center for Academic Success. And we weekly work with Center for Ac Academic Success and their activities for students um, to, to support student learning. It was very helpful to have somebody um, outside of um, what well, might happen to be a professor, but um, yours can or doesn't have to be a professor, but it was nice, at least for the first semester, when you don't know what you're doing and you're trying to find your footing, um, to have someone who is there to guide you, um, already knows their footing. And um, it's just kind of an added resource, an extra mentor. I've been talking about meal preps uh, in my most recent meeting earlier today. And uh, they've been helping, uh, I've even mentioned it to Arena and she's helping me with uh, new recipes and stuff that could help me streamline and optimize using my time. That's so powerful because they recognize that the content maybe didn't go over great, so we have what I love are called just-in-time sessions. Yeah. So they're able to um, come together and maybe reteach a concept or go over something in an interactive workshop that didn't go over so well, so that way you can know it. So it may not just be taught or explained at one time, you may get it again at the end of the week, so that way you are solid with the content, and I just love that. There is a huge system set in place so that way you do not fail. They're here to guide you, walk with you, hold your hand if need be to make sure that you are successful. So now you know a little bit more about academic support at Wassum and how it is much different compared to other medical schools which you may be considering. So that brings us to the number one most commonly asked question from prospective students at our live stream sessions during the year 2022. And it was about the admissions process at Wassum. What's it like? What was it like for you as a prospective student going through? So let's hear from our current students talking about the experience in the admissions process for them. One of the things that I loved about Wassum was it really just invoked this family sort of atmosphere and like everyone is committed to your goal to becoming a physician. Ended up applying and uh, you know, the free application uh, fee was fantastic. You know, I'm like, hey, might as well. My brother actually put my information on the um, get more info list. <laughs> and then I actually got a call from ours himself and we ended up having um, what I like to call an informal interview of sorts. It just get to know each other and um, after that I got my interview and a week later, I think it was two weeks later, I received my acceptance. This whole process and, and, and the, the way that school has been, you know, the professors, the faculty here, everybody's just been super supportive um, and, and it, I think is doing a great job and you know, I couldn't be, I couldn't be more happy. The admission staff was very reachable. I think I called, just did a cold call, and ended up with the assistant dean uh, for admissions. Something I've learned in this season is that passion is power. If this is truly your, your passion about this career, you're ready to put your all in it, you have all the power you need to get through it, and everything will come through it. And you'll mature in ways that you didn't think were possible, which is something I've learned. I laid out all of my concerns. They were all met um, flawlessly. And then um, I had uh, Dr. Welke actually get, get on a call with me too and talk me through some of just some questions I had and just how hands on everybody was with me was really really important to me. I felt valued. I felt um, needed here, which sounds a little strange, but um, yeah, I, I wouldn't have picked any other medical school over this one. If you're on the fence of whether or not to apply, I am always a, you know, the worst they can say is no, and then you keep on, keep keeping on, right? And so I, if, if you're on the fence, 
just make the jump. Like go, like it's, it's, you know, it's free application. The part I really loved was like, I could just take my AM, my AMCAS application and just like give it to them basically on a silver platter and say, hey, here's what I did. And just the full transparency um, and just the commitment to students was something that really pushed me to say, hey, this is the place to be. I did get interviews at United States Medical Schools um, and I got into one of them and I still chose to come here. Um, and I, I, I'm grateful for that decision every day. So there you have it. Those are the top five most commonly asked questions from our live stream information sessions during the year 2022. So if you've been watching and you like what you're hearing, remember that we're still accepting applications for all of the 2023 application terms. That's the traditional fall start date for September of 2023. That's also the summer start date for May of 2023, and that's even the spring start date, January of 2023. So if you have your bachelor's degree, you've completed the MCAT, and you are ready to go, you just have not yet received an opportunity, you can still apply for one of the remaining seats in our January class. We will expedite your application for admission. The admissions committee, made entirely of faculty, will work diligently with you to get you the decision that you need. And if you're accepted, there's still plenty of time to get ready to move to Freeport and start classes next month. There's a few different ways that you can apply to Wassum. So you're gonna head over to our website at wassum.education. That's W-A-U-S-M dot education. If you previously applied utilizing your AMCAS or a COMAS submission, or even your Texas Medical Dental, or even your OMSAS, if you're from Ontario and Canada, you can submit a PDF copy of that prior submission. Because let's face it, you've, you've already done a lot of work on that submission. We will accept it as your uh, Wassum application. So all you have to do is upload a PDF copy of that prior application. We make it easy to apply. There's no fee. And then from there, we'll be in touch with you to let you know about any additional materials which you may need to submit to us in order to get moving with your application, uh, with your interview in support of your candidacy for admission. The entire process in total can take as little as a few days, especially at this time of the year as we'll be expediting your application. If you have questions, you can get you can email us. It's admissions at wassum.education. Admissions at wassum, W-A-U-S-M, dot education. You're welcome to give us a call anytime at 833-MD-WASSUM. That's 833-639-2876. So again, my name is Sean Powers. I'm Director of Admissions for Wassum. As we close out 2022, I'd like to wish you and yours a safe, happy holiday season. We look forward to seeing you back here in 2023 on Facebook and YouTube for future Wassum events. Thanks so much for joining us and take care.